सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग मधु सानिया हर्षल भार्गवी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल फॉर ऑफ यू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू गोइंग टू स्टडी द पार्ट टू ऑफ दिस लेसन दैट इज वी विल ट्राई टू वाइंड अप लेट्स सी व्हाट हैपेंस इट्स इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लेसन नाउ वी शुड कम टू नो इफ दे टुडे वी विल कम टू नो इफ दे आर डिस्कवर्ड बाय द ओनर and in what way they could manage okay uh, first of all they think that it's not uh, stealing first of all they think that it's not stealing because if you do not uh, steal a horse if you do not steal a horse for selling it uh, for the selling purpose for selling purpose then it's not exactly called stealing right they might have you know, borrowed it from somewhere or they might have uh, stolen it uh, only for a day or two so let's find out uh, what is the purpose behind uh, behind uh, you know like uh, uh, his cousins uh, you know uh, borrowing the horse or stealing the horse let let's come to know about this today and how they experience with uh, this particular horse and uh, then whether the owner of the horse can identify or can discover Uh, if uh, Aram and Morad have taken, uh, you know, his horse. So let's uh, find out all these details today, right? Okay. so dear students you see it is written at last my my cousin morad said get down i want to ride alone right so you know, now it, it seems to be uh, morad's turn okay morad says i want to ride alone will you let me ride alone i asked uh, that is up to the horse my cousin said get down uh, then morad said uh, first morad morad and aram uh, they rode together and then morad uh i asked him okay uh, moral asked the narrator aram that you please get down i need to ride on my own okay so that is uh, and then uh, aram the narrator also asked will you let me ride alone that is up to the horse my cousin said right uh, <clears throat> get down the horse will let me ride i said we shall see he said don't forget that i have a way with a horse okay so uh well i said anyway uh, anyway you have uh, with the horse i have also okay so first morad told the narrator ki don't forget that i have a way with the horse means i know how to uh, ride a horse i know how to uh, deal with the horse how to manage a horse okay uh, and then the narrator also said i also have a way to uh, deal with the uh, horse for the sake of your safety he said let us hope so get down all right i said but remember you have got to let me try to ride alone uh, i got down and my cousin morad kicked his heels into the horse and shouted bazaar run the horse stood on its hind legs snorted and burst into a fury of speed that was the loveliest see how it is going that was the loveliest thing i had ever seen my cousin morad raced the horse across a field of dry grass to an irrigation ditch crossed the ditch on the horse and 5 minutes later returned dripping wet okay so it was uh, morad stern right it was morad stern so morad was uh, having his way with the horse he has taken the horse uh, right all by himself did not share with the, uh, with the narrator till his aram and uh, when he eventually came back morad came back he was dripping wet he was very much wet okay because it might be uh, it was a rainy season right so let's find out what happens after that dear students yeah uh okay so the sun was coming up now it's my turn to ride and now the narrator aram said it's my turn to ride 
okay now let me write this is my turn to write my cousin mora got off the horse right he said now it's my turn to write i said my cousin mora got off the horse right he said i leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most awful fear imaginable the horse did not move i leaped to the back of the horse i leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most awful fear imaginable the horse did not move the horse was not moving when the narrator took over the ride of the horse kick into his muscles my cousin morad said uh, what are you waiting for we've got to take him back before everybody in the world is up and about okay so early in the morning he came so um, you know when when no, and nobody is awake yet so they are thinking of returning the horse to the owner before the world wakes up right i kicked into the muscle of the horse once again it re uh, reared and snorted then it began to run i didn't know what to do instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch the horse ran down the road to the vineyard of bikram halabian where it began to leap over vines the horse leaped over seven vines before i fell then it continued running my cousin morad came running down the road the narrator fell down uh, uh, fell off the horse okay uh, fell down from the horse uh, why because he was not having a way with the horse might be the way his uh, cousin morad was having right i am not worried about you he shouted we have got to get that horse you go this way and i'll go this way if you come upon him be kindly and i'll i'll be near i continued down the road and my cousin morad went across the field towards the irrigation ditch it took him half an hour to find the horse and bring him back so it was his cousin morad who who, who brought the horse back all right he said jump on the whole world is awake now what will you do i said uh, well he said we'll either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning right so his cousin came up with a suggestion sorry his cousin came up with a cousin came up with a suggestion we'll either take him back to back or hide him until tomorrow morning he didn't sound worried and i knew he would hide him and not take him him back not for a while at any rate the narrator was uh very much aware of the fact that his cousin morad will take the horse or hide the horse somewhere else and not and not return the horse to the winner because he's he's uh, you know like uh, his practice of riding the horse is not yet complete okay um, so for this reason he will he would love to keep the horse hidden for some more days so that both of them can have enriching experience with the horse ride right that is why in all probability the narrator guessed that in all probability his cousin morad would keep the horse hiding for at least uh four to five days let's find out not for a while at any rate where will you hide him i said i know a place he said how long how long ago did you steal this horse see now he is uh cousin now the narrator has got the opportunity to ask his cousin morad how long ago did you steal this horse it suddenly dawned on me that he had been taking these early morning rides for some time and had come for me this morning only because he knew how much i longed to ride there was some some idea dawned on the narrator dawned on means came on came in the narrator's mind so one idea dawned on the mind of the narrator right dawned on the narrator that his cousin morad had been taking this the same horse ride for a couple of days now and today this morning only he has brought the horse to me because he because he knows that i do like the horse ride very much right so that is his assumption it may not be correct it, 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 that is what uh, he is thinking actually let's find out who said anything about stealing a horse he said anyhow i said how long ago did you begin riding every morning okay so 
his cousin Morad is not interested to accept that stealing. He will never accept that stealing a horse. Then the narrator had to change his sentence or statement and asked, how long ago did you begin riding every morning? Not until this morning, he said. Are you telling the truth? I said, of course not, he said. But if we are found out, that's what you have to say. I don't want both of us to be liars. All you know is that we started writing this morning. Okay. Then the narrator was double crossing actually. He's asking his, uh, his cousin Morad, uh, are you telling the truth? Uh, then the narrator's uh, cousin said, of course not. But if we are found out, of course not. Okay, means he, the narrator's assumption that his cousin Morad had been riding the same horse for a couple of days together is true. It's a true statement, right? But his cousin is now suggesting the narrator that if we are found out, if people catch us with the horse, that is what you are to say that this morning only we have to find the, we have, we have found the horse. I don't want both of us to be liars. Now, all you know is that we started riding this morning. Okay, all right, I said. He walked the horse quietly to the barn of a deserted vineyard, which at one time had been the pride of a farmer named uh, Fred Gaudian. There were some oats and dry alfalfa in the barn. We began walking home. It wasn't easy, he said, to get the horse to behave so nicely. At first, it wanted to run wild, but as I told you, I have a way with the horse. I can get it to want to do anything I want it to do. Horse understand me. Horses understand me. He said, horses understand me. How do you do it? I said. I have an understanding with the horse, he said. Yes, but what sort of an understanding? I said. A simple and honest one, he said. Okay. So let's find out what is this all about. Okay. What is that honest understanding that uh, his cousin uh, Murad uh, is having. Uh, uh, that is what we need to understand now. So let's find out, dear students, um, how does he, how he convinces uh, his understanding or explains his understanding to his, uh, his, his, his cousin, that is the narrator here, that is uh, around. Then afternoon, okay, mm, then you see here, how do you do it? I said, I have an understanding with the horse, he said, Yes, but what sort of an understanding, I said. A simple and honest one, he said. Well, I said, I wish I knew how to reach an understanding like that with a horse. You are still a small boy, he said. When you get to be 13, you will know how to do it. Okay. So, it means that the narrator Aram is younger than his cousin Morad, right? That is why he's saying you are still a small boy. When you get to be 13, you will get to know how to do it. I went home and ate a hearty breakfast. That afternoon, my uncle, Bushro, came to our house for coffee and cigarettes. He sat in the parlor, sipping and smoking and remembering the old country. Then another visitor arrived, a farmer named John Byro, an Assyrian who, out of loneliness, had learned to speak Armenian. 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 Okay. So... As you can see here, uh, a farmer, John Byro, there is a farmer by the name John Byro, who is an Assyrian, but uh, who had also learned to speak Armenian, okay, who came to the house of the narrator, uh, narrator right? Uh, and as well as his uncle Kushrov also came to their house for coffee and cigarettes that afternoon, right? My mother brought the lonely visitor. Uh, coffee and tobacco and he rolled a cigarette and sipped and smoked and then at last sighing sadly uh, he said my white horse which was stolen last month is still gone I cannot understand it so you can understand dear student the owner of the horse the owner of the horse who is the owner of the horse then what is your idea? Tell me, text me the name of the owner of the horse. Who is the owner of the horse? Tell me now. 
just text me the answer you can text me the answer dear students who who do you think is the owner of the horse the hint has been given it's very simple uh, just text me the owner of the horse who has lost his horse last month nobody has texted me yet what is the problem bhargavi arpita omkar who do you think is the owner of the horse which has gone missing and is under the possession of uh, morad and the narrator aram tell me who is the owner according to you of the horse who is the owner of the horse according to you Okay, so my mother brought the lonely visitor coffee and tobacco, and he rolled a cigarette and sipped and smoked, and then at last, sighing sadly, he said, "My white horse, which was stolen last month, is still gone. I cannot understand it." My uncle Koshro became very irritated and shouted, "It's no harm. What is the loss of a horse? Haven't we all lost the homeland? What is this crying over a horse? That may be all right for you, a city dweller, to say." John Byro said. but what of my sare what good is a sare without a horse pay no attention to it my uncle kushrop said okay so dear students uh, dear students what is the meaning of sare you tell me okay what is the meaning of sare do you know the meaning of sare Gargolian tribes. Uh, no, Vinita. Uh, thank you so much for your response. Uh, I wanted to ask you the meaning of sare. Actually, what is the meaning of sare? Do you know the meaning of sare? Uh, sare is a country of south eastern England. Okay, country town. You can say country town is called sare. Okay. it's a uh, country of south eastern england right so uh okay so john byro like uh, harendra dayal is saying john byro very good thank you bade uh, uh, john uh, john byro is the ans- uh, owner of the uh, of the horse okay uh, then when uncle koshrop said we have lost our land uh, you know long back so what is a horse in front of a land forget about this then uh, he said 
what good is a sare without a horse okay so let's find out if there is any other meaning of sare right uh, what is the other meaning of sare that is also important right so dear students here the meaning of sare is a four wheel two seated horse horse a four wheel two seated horse drawn pleasure carriage right so it's a kind of a carriage which is uh, like a bullock cart right it's like a cart or carriage which is drawn by pulled by the horse that is called sare so uh, john bido might be having a sare john bido uh, john bido might be having so harsh harsh you have to change your gmail id okay so you should keep it in your name only not the name the name of harendra okay you have to keep the gmail in your name only okay you make a gmail account and log in to youtube with this account that is make a a uh, gmail account in the name of harsh dayal and then you log in with your name so that i get your name because i am not supposed to know whether your name is harsh or harendra right so as it will appear on the screen i shall call your name okay okay so uh, yeah there is a problem with microphone uh, omkar uh, might be because of the, because i am speaking relatively loudly actually i am speaking relatively loudly here so uh, might be because uh, of might be because of some other reasons okay anyway so all of you see all of you yes so here you see what good is a sare sare what we learned about sare sare is a carriage horse drawn carriage which is pulled by the horse right that is why um um bayro is saying uh, what good is a sare without a horse pay no attention to it my uncle kushro bro pay no attention to it my uncle kushro bro right i walk because uh, uncle kushro kushro has a characteristic trait like crazy straight street is uh, character crazy street he always often to say he always often used to say uh like uh, there's no harm pay no attention to it the same is something same is he's he's repeating the same here actually pay no attention to it my uncle kushro bro i walked 10 miles to get here john byro said yeah i walked 10 miles to get here john byro said you have legs my uncle kushro shouted okay so mr uh, his uncle narrator's uncle kushro is a crazy fellow so Uh, you know he is even uh, sort of pulling the leg of a visitor like uh, like john byro in his house okay he should not pull his leg uh, anyway uh, my leg left leg pains me the farmer said pay no attention to it my uncle kushro bro because this is the crazy street in his character uh, uncle kushro that he often used to say pay no attention to it there is no harm okay now that horse cost me 60 dollars the farmer said i spit on money my uncle goshro said he got up and stalked out of the house slamming the screen door my mother explained he has a gentle heart she said it is simple simply that he is homesick and such a large man the farmer went away and i ran over to my cousin i ran over to my cousin mora's house so when when the narrator aram got to know about the fact that the horse belonged to a farmer called uh, john byro and he has lost his horse for a month almost a month or might be a uh, couple of days uh, then you know he uh, like aram became very much nervous 
uh, he became very much very much stressed so he went running to the house of his uh, you know like um, cousin Mora to give the information about the fact that the horse belongs to a to an Assyrian farmer called John Myro who had already discovered that his horse had been stolen right so to give, give this information to him he went running to the uh, to his uh, to his uh, cousin's house okay so uh, he was sitting under a peach tree trying to repair the hard wing of a young robin which could not fly he was talking to the bard what is it he said the farmer John Byro, he visited our house, he wants his horse. See, the farmer John Byro, he wants his, um, he wants his horse. You have had it a month, it's, it's been almost a month you have, you have stolen his horse. I want you to promise not to take it back until I learn to ride. But at the same time, I want you to promise to me that you will not return it until I learn how to ride it. It will take you a year to learn to ride, my cousin Morad said. We could keep the horse a year, I said. My cousin Morad leaped to his feet. He became surprised when he came to, uh, came to know that his, his brother wants him to keep the horse for a year. What? He wrote. Are you inviting a member of the Gargolanian family to steal? The horse must go back to its true owner. He, he, his his uh, cousin Morad said, the horse must go back to its true owner. Okay, if I keep it for a year, then it will be called, I shall be called a thief. Right, it will be equivalent to stealing. I cannot keep it for a year. And moreover, I cannot break the trust of my community. I cannot break the reputation of my community. My community is very much uh, known for being, in, being honest for centuries together. When, I said, in six months at the latest, he said, he threw the bird into the air. The bird tried hard, almost fell twice, but at last he flew away high and straight. Early every morning for two weeks, my cousin Morad and I took the horse out of the barn of the desert vineyard where we were hiding. It. So they hung, hid the horse uh, in a deserted vineyard. Okay, in a deserted vineyard where they were hiding the horse where they were hiding the horse okay yeah. and every morning the horse when it was my turn to ride alone leaped over grape vines and small trees and threw me and ran away nevertheless i hope in time to learn to ride the way my cousin Mora rode one morning on the way to uh, Fred Rajian's desert vineyard, we ran into the farmer John Byro, who was on his way to town. Let me do the talking, my cousin Mora said. I have a way with farmers. Okay, now listen what happened. Now, one morning on the way to Fred Rajian's desert vineyard, we ran into the farmer John Byro, who was on his way to town. So, they met the owner of the horse. Let me do the talking, my cousin Morad said. I have a way with farmers. Good morning, John Baido, my cousin Morad said to the farmer. So, they ran into the farmer. Ran into farmer means they met farmer, okay? Um, on the way. So, let's see how the conversation begins and what do they converse, okay? Uh, what do they interact with one another? So, dear students, now it's very interesting. They have met John Byro straightway. They have met John Byro straightway. So that is very dangerous. Now let's find out what happens because now see John Byro might discover the fact that uh, you know like uh, these two boys have stolen his uh, his his horse, right? So let's let's find out what happens now because all these days. Uh, Morad and Aram were under the impression that they will not be discovered by anybody. But unfortunately, they ran into John Byron, uh, John Byron now. And uh, now let's see how John Byron reacts. Uh, and how can Morad mo uh, motivate, uh, sort of, 
not motivates exactly how how uh, Morad uh, how Morad uh, manipulates uh, the fact to convince John Byron about the horse. Whether he at all becomes successful in convincing John Byron that it is not John Byron's horse or not, let's find out now. Okay. Good morning, son of my friends. He said. So, John Byron wished both of them. Uh, sorry, uh, he wished Mora as son of his friend. What is the name of your horse? My heart, my cousin Mora said in Armenian. My heart. A lovely name, John Byron said, for a lovely horse. I could swear it is the horse that was stolen from me many weeks ago. See, so he could easily understand that this is the same horse which was stolen from him because you know uh, he, you can easily um, identify your own stuff, right? So this is how John Byron immediately could identify that it is his horse which was stolen weeks ago. May I look into the, his mouth? Of course, Murad said. The farmer looked into the mouth of the horse. Uh, tooth for tooth, I, he said. Tooth for tooth, he said. I would swear it is my horse if I didn't know your parents. The fame of your family for honesty is well known to me. Yet the horse is the twin of my horse. Okay. See such a nice sentence, he said. Okay. He said, the fame of your family for honesty is well known to me. Right. Yet the horse is the queen of my horse. So it means that I know that your your family has been very much well known for honesty. But in spite of that, I can surely say that it is my horse. It means you are you are ruining the uh, reputation of your family. This is what he indirectly means to say. A suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart. Then he goes on to say, a suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart. Good day, my young friends. Good day, John Byro, my cousin Murad said. It means that uh, John Byro has already understood that the horse belonged to him. So now uh, they will be in trouble. Murad and Aram, they have to immediately return the horse to, the, uh, to John Byro's barn. Otherwise, uh, the matter will be reported to the parents okay, of uh, Morad and Aram, and in that case, they will be in trouble. Early the following morning, we took the horse to John Byrus' vineyard. Immediately next morning, they took, uh, they took the horse to John Byrus' vineyard and put it in the barn. The dogs followed us around without making a sound. The dogs, I whispered to my cousin Morad, I thought they would bark. They would act somebody else. He said, "I have a way with dogs." Okay, so Morad seems to be a, a seems to have a way with everything, not only with farmers, with uh, horses, with dogs also. Right? He seems to be a very smart fellow. Uh, so the next day they have gone to the barn of John Vineyard of John Byro uh, to keep the horse there because John Byro knows. Uh, the family identity of the of of Moral, right? And Aram, therefore, they cannot hide the horse any longer. That is why it is better to return the horse to John Byrus Vineyard. Otherwise, he would be, I mean, they would be uh, caught by their parents. Let's see what happens. Uh, my cousin Mora put his arm around the horse, pressed his nose into the horse's nose, patted it, and then uh, we went away. That afternoon, John Byro came to our house in his sari. Okay, that very afternoon only, John Byro again came to their house, okay, in his sari, in his carriage, horse carriage, and showed my mother the horse that had been stolen and returned. I do not know what to think, he said. The horse is stronger than ever. The horse has become now strong. Now the horse has become stronger than ever. Better tempered also. Earlier it was not better tempered. Now it has become better tempered also. I thank God. My uncle Koshro, who was in the parlor, became irritated and shouted, Quiet, man, quiet. Your horse has been returned. Pay no attention to it. So that is the humor part, okay? So he is a humorous character, uh, Uncle Khosrow is a humorous character. 
he has a crazy streak in his character and he often used to say uh, there is no harm pay no attention to it right so uh, the horse of john byro has been returned to his uh, pioneer and the same evening john uh, john byro went to the house of uh, mora okay Um, or the narrator's house, you can say, not Mora, narrator's house, and then he was describing. See, he was telling his mom, "You see, this is what happened with my horse. I returned my horse, but I have got it uh, in a better position because the horses become stronger than before, and the horses become better tempered also, right? So it's a very interesting lesson, and it teaches us like." Uh, it gives us some information about uh an adventure with, with a horse right this lesson doesn't have much of a la- a moral lesson of course but uh, it is uh, it is something like uh, it's an adventure lesson uh, adventure with the horse and uh, some information about armenian tribe gargalonian family um and how smart is a 13 year old uh, mora how we could manage everything very smartly so that's what we come to know and uh, here you can see one thing uh dear students as you can see here uh this story does not have breathless adventure and exciting action then what in your opinion makes it interesting did the boys return the horse because they were conscious stricken or because they were afraid um uh, so you have to find out the answer they were afraid you know probably right one day back there in the good old days when i was 9 and the world was full of every imaginable kind of magnificence and life was still a delightful and mysterious dream the story begins in a mood of nostalgia can you narrate some incident from your childhood that might make an uh, interesting story so, okay so uh, you can see here the story revolves around characters who belong to a tribe in armenia mora and arama are members of the dargolanian family now located armenia and assaria on the atlas and prepare a write up on the dargolanian tribes you may write about people their names traits geographical and economic features as suggested in the story right so dear students um uh, go to my website okay uh go to my website for the this lesson okay you can go to my website for this lesson dear students right mm. Mm. so harsh uh, class test uh, like uh, it's like it's like assignment only like there is no such class test actually like see uh, there will be pt1 okay uh, but for you i think not immediately after some days so we will send you the question paper and you have to answer at home and then send us back that that has been the trend uh, so far right there will be some sp- uh, uh, stipulated time uh within which you have to send your question answer script to us uh you have to upload on google classroom so this this is how we can write the test right so anyway dear students uh, like harsh you see uh harsh um, i shall send in the group this link of my website you can go to my website and you will f- what happened is not opening okay so harsh uh, you can see here english with a difference dot com so you are a new student those of you who have joined our school this year for them uh, you see this is english with a difference dot com right you will click here and then you will go to get started you see here get started this is the home page actually you go to get started and then it will take you here and then you go to your class see your class class 11 so uh, you can see here it is your class which is shown here right and after that you see
I show you, dear students, I will just show you. Uh, just show you, just wait. Uh, I'll show all of you this one. Okay. So, Harsh, please see now. Uh, you see here, uh, snapshot, beautiful whiteboards. You see, this is all the lessons of your syllabus. You see, this is all the lesson of your syllabus. So, beautiful whiteboards is this one. So, you click on beautiful whiteboards. Right, so you shall get uh, this these things. Okay, story at a glance you will find. You can read the story at a glance. Then you will read NCRT solution here. See, on uh, NCRT solution is given here. Right, uh, and uh, short some short question with answers are also given here. So short question with answers. Uh, all of you can study from the website itself. Okay, you can study from the website it's itself extra questions and if you think these are long enough but NCRT questions what I suggest you uh, please write down because here are only two or three questions okay um, understood so otherwise what you can do dear students uh, what you can do like uh, extra questions small short ones you can write and uh, long questions you can uh, read from the website. Okay, you can study this NCIT solution from the website and these this short questions with answers you write down on your English notebook, dear students. Okay, so I shall send you the link in your class 11 so that you are able to go to the page directly or otherwise I have shown you how to go to the page directly, right? So, dear students, uh, it's time to wind up the class today. So, please do text me P register me your presence so that I can update your attendance okay so please text me P and then let us wind up okay thank you so much dear students please text me P and then you can leave the classroom yes thank you so much and then you can leave the classroom